Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience. It has been too long, so smash the like button, leave a five-star rating for the show, and get ready, folks, for Cust Corner! Cust Corner, it's Cust Corner. Cust Corner, it's Cust Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cust Corner, it's Cust Corner. Cust Corner, hee <laughs> hee. That's not what people are calling it that, that, at all that is, anymore, that's how, actually. That's, that's actually how they find it, except for the trolls. I mean, you don't need to bring it up every single time. Jeff Feinberg is in the studio as well. I'm, I'm excited for today. Tim has been bursting at the seams to get a recording in. It has been a while. Uh, the world has been a bit different, so I imagine his takes are more insane. I don't even want to talk about that serious stuff anymore. Oh. We did a show on the serious stuff. Let's talk about the Tim stuff. No, but yeah, I just mean like his whole... Just, he's been home more. I bet you the takes are, are phenomenal. Well, home more, inside exactly the same, I would <laughs> guess. As a noted indoorsman, that's what we can do. So, Tim, the floor is yours. What would you like to talk about today? I have several topics. <clears throat> the first one I want to bring up, and I, I you know, to, to lay our cards on the table, I gave these boys warning that I wanted to talk about a particular show, but nothing else. So the History Channel has this television show called Alone. I think it's in its sixth or seventh season. Now, I've watched a couple seasons, not everyone. The essential conceit of the show is that they drop people off in the Northern Territories of Canada, and they got to make it on their own with basically minimal supplies given. I think they get a tarp, one or two other things on that. You sort of have to make it. <clears throat> and this year is a special year where the winner of this contest gets a million dollars. And what you have to do is you simply have to last 100 days out in the wilderness and i have been obsessed with this show first i think i can do it oh secondly <laughs> and more importantly i don't think it's as hard as it looks i think you know pat has long said well you know american ninja warrior is is all gussied up for television and uh you know storage wars is gussied up for television so okay fine maybe that's being done here too maybe they're trying to make it look tougher than it really is i mean you got all the time in the world to to make a house and thatch a roof and make yourself some snares or traps or bows. And like I see people on there and they're making dumb mistakes. This one lady went to go fishing and I'm kind of hoping for her. I think she's going to do a good job. She went and found this good fishing spot, but didn't bring her bow and arrow with her. So a big moose came by and she couldn't take down the moose. Well, I would have done that. I'd have taken that moose down. And then I could have smoked the meat or whatever and had it for a while. I, I, people make mistakes they don't anticipate. Like you should bring your weapons with you if you're going to be hunting. Uh, I don't know. I just, I think the show is really cool. The scenery is neat. The idea of it is cool. And I think it's the everyman thing. Like, it's man against nature. I think I could do it. Okay. So uh, would, would you like to start or would you like me to start first? Because I watched the show. My grandfather is big into this show. So I've watched it with him when I go home. Oh, cracking a DC. He's getting, he's getting into his groove here. Uh, you, right, you'll probably be able to be more factual. But I think the take is absolutely egregious. You even started the show by saying noted endorsement. Tim is afraid of like taking a fish off a hook. Yeah. Okay. Yes, but he true. but he claims to be an elite angler. He also had a moment, I think, in a previous record where he thinks he could just be an elite like farmer. <laughs> he just sees things and thinks he could be exceptional at them. And now he thinks he could be an elite Arctic survivalist. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> This guy doesn't even want to leave his house putting on his bougie boots and jacket and scarf to get dinner so he'll stay home and eat two sleeves of Oreos with sparkling water. <laughs> but he's going to survive in the Arctic? Oh, I, I, don't... I love winter, though. Winter's my favorite season. I am a master angler. You're, I, you're I, not. I, Have you ever, ever actually caught a fish before? Many, I told you people, on the first ever cast I ever threw in my life, I caught a fish. I'm actually pretty good at fishing. Now I think he's I'm a natural. Anyway. But he can't get the fish, but you can't get the fish off the hook. Well, the so if you're surviving you sort of, by yourself in the Arctic, would, would you be able I, to do it? Because it feels like I, you can't. I obviously would have to. It's, it's about survival. And I would do it. And I'd, I, I would just, you know, stiffen up my spine and get it done. 
And like, you don't do a lot of farming in the tundra when it's cold. So not to worry about that. It's just a that, matter that of snaring. No, no, that is not what we were talking about. What Jeff was saying is that you see farming and you think, I would be good at that. And now you're applying that same be. logic to surviving in the Arctic. Um, Tim, what would you say the hit rate on people lasting the 100 days in the Arctic are based on this show. I think only one. I think only one person probably will make it. Maybe mm-hmm. two. And it, but it I could be you. Anymore. And these are like survivalists. They're not like random people. Yeah, but here's the thing: is I want it. <laughs> what? I want it badly. You know, you and okay. How many hours does Tim last? But I mean, no one has more experience with this kind of lifestyle than Paul, who was a professional tree planter for like seven years, not in the Arctic, I assume. Only but, only six years. Six like like nine hundred and fifty thousand trees in the ground. Who's counting? And uh, it's like twenty four months worth of living in a tent up in the Canadian wilderness. So have at it. Uh, my question to you is. Based on this show, I don't know if you're familiar with the show or not, but like people are feeding you out there. Like there's stuff, like not necessarily around, but there's like an encampment and there's supplies if you need them. There's none of that here. And think about how hard was it to live just out in the wilderness anyway? It it was awful. And we had like a full out mess tent with cooks and people providing food for us. Like we didn't have to go out and hunt for our food or anything like that. Tim, you don't stand a chill. You don't stand a chance. Years ago, I read Walden by Thoreau and thought I could do that. I was inspired by that book. And I still think I could. Like, I could go out and make myself in the world like that. And it's like, yes, it would be difficult to cut down the tree. They give you an axe or a saw. You cannot be trusted with a pair of safety scissors. Now you're going to use an axe? That's not true. I could cut down the timber, and I could thatch the roof, and I'd build, you know, I could figure out how to make fire. How hard can that really be? You won't turn on, okay, you're afraid to turn on a barbecue. (laughs) Obviously, I would have to, like, hang out where there's lightning or something and then get catch the fire from that or bring a flint and or find a flint and a stuff. I have time. I'd figure it out. What do you mean you have time? You, wait, you have 100 days no, to figure you, it out. No, no, you, you have to last 100 days by, you're talking about snaring rabbits. Have you ever fucking snared rabbits? Because I have. This is what, no, I haven't snared one, so, but I've so, seen so, people snare them. So you know how to actually set up a snare to catch a rabbit. Well, I'm watching this show and I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is as funny as you think it is. I think I could do this. I think the average person could do no. this. Man, I think he's got a pushed. better chance of landing from space than he would survive in 100 <laughs> I do days. Too. I think so, too. 100 days in the Arctic with, like... With nothing. Nothing. And, uh, like... Well, a couple things. So what do you get? You get, get a tarp. You get a tarp an and axe, a hatchet. saw, an axe. And I, I, you may get one or two other things as well. Because, I mean, obviously, you get a camera uh, or somebody's video camera. I think it's a camera of your own, though. Uh, I think that's sort of it. And maybe some some basic medical supplies. I don't know. Uh, Paul, yes. <laughs> I feel like a spin-off episode of Cuss Camping um, with like the whole the whole dream team of the PME going camping and like a little documentary needs to be done to see I, how I good Tim is in the, the outdoors, how much of an outdoorsman he is. <laughs> I, I haven't camped in a long time. I tend to find four-star hotels to be a bit uh, <laughs> you know, tough. I went to... So Bonner- I would have to... Gir- I'd really have to switch modes. <laughs> Wait a second. I went to Bonnaroo with Tim and we had to buy a tent. Uh, not a super big help setting up the most rudimentary tent there was. That was the last time I tented. So that's 100% the last time I tented. So the last time you tented was 12 years ago. Also, uh, Tim once threw me... How familiar are you with Arrested Development, Jeff? Quite familiar. Uh, You know how when you, like, throw keys at George Michael and he, like, turns his back? That's basically This is nonsense. I I, I once got Tim to toss me my keys from, like, I would say 10 feet away, and he missed me by about 6 feet. So this, oh, is, this is the kind of level that we're dealing with here. Tim, once you didn't have a lighter that you couldn't light your cigs with, you would, like, be out of there within an hour. Okay. I understand <laughs> that it would be a challenge. I don't think it would be easy, but I have faith in me. And I think, you know, in the climate where a lot of people are, like, bothered by the cold and the darkness and it getting dark early and, like, having to, like, conserve calories, I feel like that's, an, like, a psychological advantage I would have. Do I have all the physical like gifts and skills some of these survivalists have? No, I don't. I'm not as experienced, but I read up some books before I went and I'd feel like I'd be pretty prepared, but I still wouldn't be quite as experienced, but I'd have a psychological edge because I know that million dollars is out there. It's only a hundred days for heaven's sake. What have I done for the last hundred days? 
you know, lounge around. So yeah, I, you, I could use the this. internet, be in some air conditioning. You're on your lake property. If you do want to go for a swim, it's very nice out. Oh, you can go to the store and get some coffee. You would last maybe 45 minutes. See, everyone has no faith in me, but I believe in me. I think I'd, if I didn't last the whole distance, I would last a respectable amount of time. I don't know if you can. Unless I got hurt or something. I don't know if they'll have Dasani for you to boil while you're out there. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. You can't, you can't boil the water. You can't start a fire. I could start a fire. With what? Be, ma- With what? Mankind you just, you just, you just, you just but, said that you would wait for lightning. <laughs> that was well, your strategy. One, that is one way that ancient, that ancient civilizations used to get fire. Uh, but, you know, pe- people have been making fires for 10,000 years. I would figure it out. I'd have to figure it out. M- necessity is the mother of invention. I- I'd get it done. So what, what happens after 24 hours when I- you haven't figured it out and you haven't eaten anything? <laughs> There's not a chance in hell he would pass phase one of producer screening. He's a liability, like, from go. <laughs> yeah, he is. There, there's no amount of insurance possible to get You're him like, on okay, show. we might bring him on because he's the guy we get to, like, Show going home he's on the, the first episode. He's the, Will, he's the William Hung of Alone. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not very nice. She banged. She banged him. That's you. Oh, Tim moves. Tim moves home. I watched, you're not staying in the Arctic. I went to the Tim's Jays af- game when he Tim's sang afraid, the national anthem. Tim is like afraid to go to Europe. <laughs> I'm not a traveler by nature, but it would be a good experience. This is all. This is. This is ludicrous. Ludicrous. Uh, he would survive space more times out of a hundred than he would survive this. Yeah, this is instant death. The, sh- the show is great. You know, often the show is turned into like me complaining about things. I have nothing but nice things you to say about the show. It's a lot of fun. Are you think you can do everything? Going back to my no. original point. Why no. don't you, why don't you just start out on naked and afraid? I think that's like two days. Like you watch a guy miss a ten foot putt, and you're like, I'd make that. No, I know I miss those because I miss those all the time. So making a ten foot putt harder than surviving a hundred <laughs> days is, in the that, Arctic, according that to that is him. not what I that is that is, not what, that I is said. what you just I didn't say said. it was easy. I didn't say it would be easy for me to last a hundred days in the Arctic on my own, but I think it could be done. I watch these guys cut down the trees and get things out, and you don't think the producers give them a little bit of help here or there. No, that, that's the point of the show is to watch the people crumble. You want to do as little for them as possible. That's the production part of this. Well, I think I, I think I, I will. Wa- I, when I watch it, I imagine myself in that situation. If anything, like, the would producers I wet the wood, like to make yeah, it to make harder, it worse. like yeah. to make it oh. like miserable. So is this show basically like naked and afraid, but without the naked? Yeah, without the naked, but it's like real people who are survivalists, and it's like the most extreme conditions. My grandfather loves it. So my grandfather is someone who probably could have gone on this show once upon a time from the backwoods of northern Newfoundland. This is where he grew up. This, I mean, when I went snaring rabbits, he's the one who showed me how yeah. to make a snare. When I would go hunting, I would go hunting with him. And I don't know if he would be able to cut it out there. Not enough booze. <laughs> so, Tim, if he locked himself out of his house, he'd have a meltdown. But he's going to survive 100 true. days in the Arctic. You know, you try to make it sound like I'm so soft, but I'm not. What are you talking? You're like the softest person alive. Oh, please. You're, I'm made of pretty tough fiber. You are afraid to turn on a barbecue. For years, you I'm wouldn't use it. For I'm just, years, just, you wouldn't turn on an oven because you thought you'd burn the house down. I didn't want to make a mistake, okay? <laughs> You're afraid of peacocks. <laughs> well, what what about when terrifying. a polar bear rolls up on you? What's going to happen I don't think then? there are. I don't think polar bears are hanging out that far south. This is like Great Slave Lake, that area. So black bears then, or grizzly bears. Lot, there's like wolverine there's wolverines hanging around and bears yeah well you know like if you have to be smart like some of these people are dumb they like hang their dried fish in the trees where, instead of like building a wooden cache or a stone cache you're talking about smoking it. the the meat you you kill bud <laughs> you're talking about you at, where are you building a smoker his homemade smoker and of like <laughs> you no do it over the you do it over a flame you bring in a green egg no, you do it over a flame, right? Over over a fire. You can just smoke it real quick. I think you're vastly overrating your ability to acquire fire within the short amount of time that you would need in order to actually eat something. I think I'd be able to get it going because I would have nothing else to do until I got fire. If I put my mind to something for that long, I'd get it. Any, almost anybody would. You would. I, he once read a book on how fire is made. I have, actually. And can't do it. 
It's just like how Tim has the taste of Italy because he once read a book on Italian cuisine. Hey, listen, I don't need to go to the Sistine Chapel to know what it looks like. I can see it on my computer and I can read about it in a book. The very cultured individual. What else do you got? Alone, watch it, History Channel. Better than that Oak Island show. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Uh, something you had brought to my attention and I took notes on was this list about the most difficult sports. Ah. And how asinine that list is from that fellow. Well, it's... Okay, so this is one I actually really did want to talk about. So there's like a list of like 65 sports or something. They were ranked in terms of difficulty, like 1 to 65. But I don't quite understand what the parameters are for it. Like, is basketball hard? And what level of basketball are we talking about? Like, if I'm not six foot five, chances are I can't play professional basketball. Or unless you're so amazing in the point zero 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 one percent who's six foot one and they can play and be amazing point guards or something like that. Like there are some physical limitations to some of this stuff. So are we talking about just casually playing basketball and how hard that is with other people who are the same size as you, I suppose, or is it how hard is it to play at the absolute highest level? That's the part I didn't. Like quite how understand. hard would it be to make? The pros in like to make. I, I don't. I don't. That's why I don't understand about this list. I think it should be what would be the hardest to do, even a cheap uh, sort of facsimile of. So, for example, golf. Obviously, the best golfers in the world are incredibly skilled at a very difficult sport. I can go out there and shoot ninety, so I can sort of fake what they're doing a little bit. But you can't. Whereas, but, but you can't. Figure skating. Hold on. Hold on. Figure hold skating. On, hold not on. Even close. No, hold on though. You can't actually go and shoot ninety. You and I can go out and shoot 90 when we go out and play together. If we were to show up at the PGA Tour and try to play from where they play from, from the with tips. their setup, we're shooting like 180. Sure, but my point was I can do a cheap facsimile of it. That is not the case when it comes to you could be, figure skating. No, you, you could do it with figure skating. You put on a pair of figure skates and fall down the entire time. But I'm no, just saying I you both I... like are putting from 25 feet with a pro. There's like a pretty good decent chance you're both down in the same number sure yeah, but what happens. about when you're on the tee oh that's i'm just saying there are sp parts of the game i don't know golf is cool in that you can like walk where they play. obviously you play different tee boxes but you just you can play the field but that is also sort of the equivalent of i can go to a batting cage and set it to 90 miles per hour if it's coming down the same way the entire time i yeah, can hit it i can if hit i if i stood in front of a pitcher who was also mixing in and not throwing it at exactly the same speed in exactly the same spot every single time, I would not be able to hit it. Yeah, so, I agree. But I still think they would be that would be easier. That's still a facsimile of something like, I don't know, uh, diving. Like professional diving. No, you actually I, have to I can, do something. No, no, but to use it's just because you're only saying this because you don't do any of these things. If you just jumped off a diving board, I, I could be a diver. Is basically the logic that you're putting out here. No, or like a ski jumping, right? Like that, that's, or, or bobsledding. Although I, anybody could do bobsledding. Wasn't like marathon uh, luge. running on this? Like, list? Yeah, Tim can run. Therefore, marathon's not so challenging. It's like I ran, a, I ran a half marathon. It doesn't marathon. matter what your time is. You, you ran the marathon. That's right. I mean, I'm probably the only person on this podcast who's actually ran a half marathon. You're right. I've run full ones. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm just saying I'm probably the only one who's run a half marathon. Yeah. So I, if, and if I can your, do that. What was your time, by the way? I'm curious. I do, not rem I do not remember. Do you think you ran the half marathon as fast as I ran the full marathon? Probably faster, yes. I would hope so. <laughs> uh, anyway, it, the number one sport they had here was boxing, and I, I don't agree with that. As much as I think boxing is incredibly difficult, uh, just about anybody, two people can strap on gloves and fight, right? Ice hockey, two, football, three. I don't think any of these top ones should be. Martial arts? You can make a case for martial arts, which is ranked six at number one. Totally. You can make that case. I think figure skating needs to be way up there. Uh, water polo needs to be way up there. And then all the rest of them are like, oh, I, I, I don't know, like calf roping. Yeah, that is incredibly hard. Could you imagine trying to calf rope? How hard that would be? Paul, uh, Paul you want to weigh in on this? I actually disagree with the MMA take being MMA, MMA being the hardest. Like Greg Hardy is just a really good athlete who just stumbled upon MMA because the NFL well, wouldn't play him anymore. Anymore, not and MMA, he's able to get to like arts. yeah. Well, what the hell is martial arts? Like judo? what the hell is karate? Karate? <laughs> karate? karate? Well, well mixed martial arts is, even like a, is a all sport? of those things all in one. All I'm saying is that if you're a big boy, if you're a big boy with power, you don't really have to be all that skilled. You can you can make your make your way in the in the sport without. Well, you know, a great skill okay. set. 
Well, then how can we rank any of these sports then? Well, that's why I'm trying to set parameters for it. And basically what you've said is that anything you can't do is the most impossible thing in the world. Seems to me if I couldn't do it, it must be hard. You can't turn on a barbecue. We just went over this. Not hard. I don't know why you keep going Why do you Because it's think... the most pathetic thing I've ever heard in my life. Figuring out these sports is a lot easier than surviving 100 days in the Arctic. This is true. But apparently that's pretty easy. Yeah, I, don't see I it. never said it was pretty easy. And no fair listener will think I said that. Just the fact that you said you think you can do it yeah. just proves how insane you are. <laughs> I could do it. Uh, so on this list, boxing, hockey, football, basketball, wrestling. I don't know if that's the pros or the amateur level. I think it's real wrestling. Yeah. Like, so amateur wrestling, not pro wrestling. Olympic wrestling, yeah. Yeah. So when, I mean, when you turn professional, it gets easier. That's not usually the case. That seems kind of crazy to me. Uh, fishing, billiard from the bottom down, 60 down. Fishing, billiard, shooting, bowling, curling. Then archery. Archery seems like it would be tougher. Archery would be tough. Although you just you just talked I mean, about bringing your fucking bow and arrow with you and shooting a moose. I would have. Well, if there's 20 yards away from you, you should be able to hit a moose with an arrow. If if like something is 20 yards, okay, 20 yards away from you, so 60 feet away from you, you think you could hit a moose with an arrow? How much would you like to bet a me? moose? Yes. That's how, a mu- huge how much? Target. How much would you like to bet me on that? Well, we are never going to be able I'll, to. You you to give me you this. you Google the average size of a moose. I will set up a target 20 yards away from you. Mm-hmm. I will give you a bow and arrow and see if you can fucking hit it. And you only get one <laughs> shot at it, by the way. We're not going to do this. Because uh, you can't do it. Just admit. I think you, I admit, could, but. No, no. Then put your fucking money where your mouth no, is. No, I don't want to. I'm not going to be bullied. And so, no. Bullied for what? Uh, so you're just out here making asinine what, claims what, about things you can't do? One day, the show might have an extensive production budget where we'll be able to do things <laughs> just like this. <laughs> it's true that billiards should be down there. Remember the time in Phoenix I kept running the table playing billiards? That, That's how easy that was. That didn't happen. <laughs> But okay. Because they, my opponents kept scratching on the eight ball, so I kept winning over and over again. <laughs> That's right. I was at our Airbnb. He he won two games in a row because people scratched on the eight. Being a pro, that, that also included hard. people. It was at my bachelor party, which included oh. people like jumping on the table as the game was going around. No, not while it was going on. It was. That's what Artie was up to. I think volleyball is also incredibly difficult. What? No. Out of all, out of all know. of these things, like, I'm not saying it's easy, but like, give me a break. Volleyball, oh, state, I think there's a reason like every elementary school plays it because it's super easy to teach little uh, children. Re- oh yeah, so it's so easy. These people that go to the Olympics, they barely have to work at it. Okay. So, so okay, so let's let's say that about any sport. To be the best in the world, Tim, at billiards, also not so easy, right? Not everyone can be like you and have opponents scratch on the eight when you can't make a shot the entire time. I can make a couple of shots. You can't. Anyway. Yeah, bad coordination. We just went over this. I use the rake. <laughs> 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 I believe that rake is there to be used. You ought to use it. I think that there's this like moral indignation against people who use you. you and you're uh, saying rake. that you're not soft and you're someone who uses a rake and the table he's using the rake at is not a real billiards table. It's like one of the shitty ones you would get at home. Whatever. I'm not afraid to say I used it. I think you should. I think that that it's, it's, it's very strange not to uh, you, the professionals use it. I should mention it's like the same people who say, well, I'll never use a hybrid on the golf course. That's not for you no, know, for real men. Nonsense. Like, that type of thinking is uh, I've never is heard anyone say that on the golf course. Oh, I have many people. You know, people who yeah. forbid to use a hybrid. I don't use hybrids because I can't hit them. I enjoy irons. But apparently, Tim is talking about fictional people he's made up who disagree with. No, him I'm not making up fictional people. All right, then who? Give us names. Our friend Tim Botts thinks this. So our one friend who, because you use hybrids, so he makes fun of you for using them, and you've taken this as everyone says this? Everyone's against me on it. Hybrids are great. Uh, Also, I have a seven seven hybrid that I hit fantastic. Did I tell you what Tim did the other day? Remember a seven hybrid? What's that supposed to replace? Like a 165, 150 shot. Like if you're in the rough or not, don't have a great lie, it's a pretty decent You 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 bought that out of like a senior set. No, no, I bought it at a golf show. Yeah, that it's a seniors club, right? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a seniors club. It's just a club. No, that I guarantee you, it's like a senior shaft. Oh, I don't know. It's a Nike. It's a nice club. It's one of those squares. I'm not, I'm just saying it's I'm and 165. What iron is that replacing? That for you? usually is a seven iron. Or or an eight iron, depending on. Why would the, you the go situation. to a hybrid for instead? Because of a... if I'm not, if I'm in the rough and I don't have a great lie, that's precisely the club I want to be using to get it out of there. Would you the want to use the just... iron to like chop down on it? No, that's why they're called rescue clubs to rescue you from bad lies. 
Whatever, whatever he's, works. He's, whatever he's, works. He's, ta- he's talking care. about not being soft. He's just mentioned he uses the rake in pool, and he uses a seven hybrid on the <laughs> golf course. I am not soft. You're pretty soft. As soft as it gets. You're the, wait. Instead of just calling you Tim Andercast, we'll call you Charmaine Andercast. That's not very nice. Charmaine the cust. So remember, we always say on the show that Tim gets all these DMs from people. Telling him how we like the, they actually yeah. agree with him. He's not soft and all this stuff. All the people that let's actually, not tell the story. That actually tell agree the with him. So we we were pressuring him in our text thread the other day because he was claiming that people were saying this. So he sent us a screen grab of someone telling him he was absolutely correct. What he had forgotten about was that that DM was from someone in the group making fun of him, but he had cut the name out of it <laughs> and just thought that the person wouldn't remember. So he's passing off troll DMs <laughs> as real DMs to the people that made the comment in the first place. I plead guilty. And then, so he took the screenshot on his phone and cropped it and then said that was Photoshop and then didn't realize that Photoshop is like a thing, like a real thing. <laughs> I thought that Photoshopping was when you took a photo and you altered it in some way. And I thought a screenshot would Photoshop uh, you're, you could Photoshop your, your screenshot by adjusting the parameters. I didn't realize it was a program. Like I know for Mac, that GarageBand is like a, a, a thing that people use to like, oh, sorry, to modify things. You mean, you mean GarageBand is a thing you use to modify audio? Well, it's I just figured audio. Oh, media, is, media is media. What's the difference? Well, w- so one I, of them you hear and one of them you see. I mean, that, that's two very and, distinct differences. The garage, so you cannot edit and, photos yes. in a garage band, Tim. I didn't realize that Photoshop was a program. I thought it was like a verb, like Kleenex, like just that, that it just meant a certain thing that it didn't mean like a particular program of editing. I thought if you do a screenshot and like you like write something on it, that's Photoshop. No, it's not apparently. 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 No, no. Thank you for clarifying that for everyone out there. They, they had no oh, idea. God. I didn't bring it up. You brought it up. I don't think that any, but how pathetic was that? Can you, can you talk through what your mindset was at the time when you did that? <laughs> of what? About just being that pathetic, trying to pass I, that I off. Was, I thought I was going to get one on them because it had been a while since that had come in. So you really do rarely have people agree with you yeah he's lying about that oh i have other dms like that but i just refuse to reveal the sources instead he tried to pass one off the only one i assume he's ever gotten as a real one it's not true then why didn't you just use one of the real ones because i didn't know where it was and i didn't want to scroll down and so many can't find yeah, just so many let's get back to this this sports most difficult sports stuff if you actually had to throw it out there the most difficult sport to do Jeff, what do you actually think it is? I can, I think you can make the case for boxing. I, I get why boxing is number one. Like professional boxing, 12 rounds. What is it two minutes around, three minutes, two minutes around? Is that what it is? Three minutes. Is it three minutes around? Okay, three minutes around, 12 rounds. The physicality, the endurance, everything like that to actually stand up and go 12 rounds, that seems tough. But here's the thing. Didn't this list have like tennis at the very bottom or near the very bottom? Tennis is no table tennis is 47th. I'm terrible at that. Yeah, that's not a big shocker. Tennis is actually seventh on the list. Okay, Most good. difficult. Oh, that makes sense. Tennis is tough. Because yeah, if you're have playing you ever... against a real good player, like how are you gonna get anything back? Yeah, if you're not good at tennis and the guy you're facing can actually serve, you're done. Like you're not gonna get a point. <laughs> Yeah, unless he, like, double faults. That's the only way you have a chance. And then if he did double fault, you would claim how great you are, wouldn't you, Tim? I mean, I'm not the worst at tennis, oh, but I'm not great really, at tennis. You, I, I can play it. Like, I I can what, what, do you mean, what do you mean you can play it? Like, you can bounce can the ball off the wall to yourself? No, no. I, I used, when I was younger, I played a little bit. I'm not the worst So what at you're it. saying is that you're basing your tennis acumen on something that happened 25 years ago. I, Sure. I mean, I think All it's, I take it's muscle from memory. He knows, you think it's muscle memory. He knows the rules, and uh, he's excited to go for a rally. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I, I, I doubt I'd be all that good anymore. I but. remember when this list came out, there were some angry uh, professional bull riders on. Uh, well, where's on bull internet? riding on this? Rodeo, bull riding, bareback. Hmm. Well, <laughs> anyone can bareback if they want to. Uh, 42 on the list of 60. I know that's one of those things like, I don't know, you go into like the bar and you hold on. 
the mechanical bull. Yeah, no one's ever good at that. But th- there's other things like I just don't know how to quantify. No, that's this. something I want to do. I want to run with the bulls in Pamplona. I had that written down. That would be fun. Do you think that would imagine be fun? How much fun that would be. Let's put you on the yeah. let's put you on the mechanical buck and bronco for see if you can stay on that one. Before, well, you don't you don't ride a bull at yes, Tim. The, if the you running. if you cannot stay on that, that should be one of the parameters of going to run with the bull. If you can't stay on the fake bull for five seconds, then you can't go run with them because you will die. Oh please, Tim! You're afraid of peacocks. How and, are you, you, and you lack how are you mobility. Gonna I'm not going to lie to you. You're, and you're afraid of Europe. Can you just watch this on I'm TV? I'm not afraid of Europe. I'm not afraid you're of afraid Europe. Of I barbecues. Don't like, I don't like trap. I'm not afraid, you're afraid of, of barbecues. You're afraid of fish. I'm afraid of live fish that are near me. <laughs> so he's never going to the Great Barrier Reef, I guess. That's not in your travel list, Oh, I God, no. I, that, that's my idea of a personal hell, having to go scuba diving or snorkeling. Scuba uh, diving? In one of those places. I, I just can't imagine that would be, again, too bougie for my tastes anyway, but certainly not something that I'd want to do. Um, yeah, if be, being the white guy from North America who goes and runs with the bulls, yeah, I'm not bougie at all. Uh, 44, weightlifting. Weightlifting. Well, I, you've already seen the most impressive weightlift in the world where you get it halfway to your waist, so maybe it should be lower. Yeah, t- so how do you, how, like, Jeff, how would you quantify weightlifting? Like, anyone can lift weights. Yeah, I, that's, I wouldn't know what that means. But that doesn't mean lifting it at the highest level isn't probably one of the more difficult things to do. Like, maybe. Like, there's one. There's, there's cycling long distance. So Tour de France, they talk about, is the most difficult sporting event in the world. But if you, if you didn't even give me the 100 days or whatever it was, like, you gave me a year to go cycle it, I could probably finish it. You know, just do a few kilometers a day, be all right with it. Like, I just, I don't quite understand what this list is trying to tell me. Not a clue. No, I, I think it's a, I think the conceit of it is very poor. But just straight up, I, I don't necessarily disagree with boxing. I would actually have water polo one. And why does softball get the rub that baseball gets for being difficult? Well, one rises. I'm not saying They're it's easy, but I think pitch. it's it's much different. But like track and field sprinting. But we also agreed, like, I would probably hit 0.50 we played, if I played baseball. No, 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 hold on. We never agreed with so that. We you, can't you, think baseball you, that You hard. ran a poll, and no one agreed with you. Everyone agreed you would Really? Hit. You said no one would, and I had double-digit support. Uh, Tim, that was that was trolling on you. And people got you confused with Tim Anderson, the baseball player. No, oh, you were just saying that because you lost. I didn't lose! What are you talking about? Well, you see, this is why that, people think, and you get the moniker of being insane. Jeff, I'm not he's, insane. he's hitting zero. Yeah. He hits like 200 in slow pitch softball, mixed softball. That's but he's got, he's going to hit 0.05. <laughs> I, 0.005. Yeah. He's going to hit 50 in Major League Baseball. Yeah. Give me a fucking break. You're delusional. I'm not delusional. You really are. Like it's like when you said you could run the 40 really fast and then you ran it three times and your fastest one was over seven, but then you said, I got no, my fastest one. You know what? You were just trying to be, I'm not, and I'm not the, the one time me. that you cracked seven seconds, you left well before the marker no, went off. That's, I am not going to take the bait. I broke You're not trying to take the bait. We have it on Don't video. Take so now you're, you see, this is what Trump does. <laughs> it's, it's not bait, Tim. We <laughs> legitimately don't think you can do any of these things. I have done some of them. Like what? What hip? Five, what, what, what was it? No, hit. I've not done that. He said hit he would 50. get a hit in Major League Baseball one of any every 20 at-bats. No. Is Maybe he made contact with like he one. He wouldn't make contact. 20. He strikes but like out gets on base pitch. with defenses there? Like, no chance, man. I don't care how many <coughs> half marathons you've run. I don't have to explain myself. All right, what else do you have then? Because this stuff is just ludicrous. Do you have any like actual topics here? I had the return of baseball and how upset I am that it's even returning. Yeah, I know. Baseball sucks. Let's not even talk about it. Perfect. I'm, no, I'm I know. The, the no, no, I, 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 said, I said that we're not going to talk about it. Okay, but I, I'm going to finish my sentence. No, we don't care about that. You know what I saw well, upstairs, uh, Jeff, uh, when I was shopping at the like grocery really? store? They have half meat, half vegetarian hamburgers. Uh, I don't. Are you reading my mind? I have this on my pad, the 50-50 burger. Yeah, I don't understand it. What is, who is the market for the 50-50 burger? People who don't want to eat meat or think meat is unhealthy or are allergic to meat or whatever their personal reason is for being against meat want nothing to do with meat. And the people who want meat want nothing to do with the Beyond Burger stuff or they would buy that. 
either sell to the market that wants meat or sell to the market that does not want meat. Who does this is like Solomon actually cutting the baby in half <laughs> and actually giving a half to each? Who does this solve? Who does this help? Nobody. I saw that commercial several weeks ago now, and I wrote it on my pad for, for the show. Like, who <laughs> is the market? What genius came up with this in a board meeting and said, I know our solution. We should have burgers for people who want to eat less meat, but not no meat. Who does that describe? I very rarely agree with Tim on food takes of any kind, but I saw it sitting there and they were all there. Of course they were. They were very much in stock. And I just thought to myself, who would want this? Vegetarians don't want this. Meat eaters don't want this. Like, who is the in-between person? No like, like, is it like the patch? People... It's like, oh, I'm trying to wean myself off cigs. I'll wear this patch to get me through to not smoking. If I, I'm a meat eater, I'm going to do some 50-50 for a bit, and then I'll be vegetarian. Like, that, that's not a leap, is it? No, I should... don't understand it whatsoever. I would never... I'm I... sure, And the thing is, I'm sure it tastes fine. I don't doubt that. Like, I, I doubt... I actually doubt that it tastes... No, they can make it taste like anything. They can anything. make it taste like anything. Like, I had a veggie burger the other day that was excellent. Nah, I don't think there's such a thing as an excellent veggie burger. Well, I think so you've actually never had one. Veggie. So anyway, listen. I actually have had veggie burgers and the Beyond Meat stuff because as a man of the people, I felt it was my obligation to try these things. And I found them to be satisfactory. They're fine. You can make them taste like whatever. And most veggie burgers, like the Beyond Meat stuff, way worse for you than an actual burger. So anyone who's like switching. Well, but that's most people who are eating Beyond Meat are not eating it for health reasons, right? They're eating it for, for ethical reasons. Yes. Now, that is one thing, but the, I do know a lot of people that switched from being meat eaters to being vegetarian because they thought it was a good weight loss program. Ugh. And it was, we had an- The opposite is, the opposite is true. We had an old, it's not the opposite. It depends on what you eat. It's like people who go vegan. Uh, we had a friend, it was the same friend that uh, Hugh, you had brought up. Uh, he had once got relieved from the movie theater for putting what? his head underneath of the cheese thing uh, <laughs> as it was going. His girlfriend- was vegan. I believe he's vegan now too. But she used to just eat these vegan fries and vegan cookies all the time. Like those were the only two things she ate. He's, there was nothing healthy about it. It was like the most unhealthy lifestyle you could have. He actually, of anyone I've ever known, I've never seen like outside of like TV or a magazine a physical transformation quite like. Uh, yeah, he's the, the the original. Like my pants are three times bigger than the ones I wear now. Like I remember he runs meeting. Marathons. I remember meeting him at the score in like what had to be like a three X Joe Thomas bright orange Browns jersey, talking like a video game wrestling tournament. And like you see him eight years later, and, and he's, he's he's in good shape. Literally, yeah, he run in, obsessed. It's a lifestyle. I don't know. But he's a booze house. One time house, I visited so his place. Impre- I remember even, he had- more, even more impressive, impressive is a booze house. I visited his place once, and I remember he had those really, really spicy nuts. No, yeah. you visited his place once and got scared shitless out of Alexa. That's true. That, that was that night. That, that, night. that was the same night, yes. I got kicked out. Yeah, Paul got <laughs> ejected from the building. <laughs> <laughs> and then wasn't feeling very good the next morning either. <laughs> Yeah, was that the was that the day the the one day you've been late the entire time we yes. worked together? I it, mean, it I was. I like to claim that forces. Um, uh, it was oh, yeah. Tim happened to be in town. Everything was working hunky dory, and then forces out of my control just happened to uh, curse me, get me really really drunk, this is and get like, me kicked out of the party, and late for the live show. Yeah, and it's my fault that Top Golf went down too. I've heard this all before. Well, the Top Golf went down the moment you put your card in and took it out. The entire thing shut down. Th- that was just a fluke, really. Fluke, huh? I don't think so. I think it's. A fluke. I want to talk about TV theme shows. I've been watching a lot of old TV recently, a lot of old TV. And what I noticed about good modern TV shows and good old TV shows is they all have excellent theme songs. That is a a thread that connects 2020 to the honeymooners back in the 50s. And I don't understand why TV networks and shows aren't putting on good, catchy, long-term theme songs. Because those are the thing that sell your show. (coughs) Think about Game of Thrones, The Wire, The Sopranos, modern shows. They all had great theme songs too. It's not just Maud and All in the Family. Then there's the Maud. So I, I, exactly. then I, there's I have my a. Heart. There's no good I, I reason. I have a. There, there's two. It's twofold. There is one really good reason for certain shows not to have it. Um, and do you find anything very similar to 
the shows that you would just mention that still have good theme songs? Where no, because there's network ones too. The Big Bang Theory, for example, has a pretty catchy one. Like it, I, I actually don't think it matters whether it's network or not network. Almost all the best shows have great theme songs. Cheers, right? Uh, the classic. It's worth cutting out the 45 seconds out of the uh, show. See, you know who you, you know who highly great. disagrees with that? People who make the fucking shows, Tim. Well, okay, and, and in 1989, you got around 24 and a half minutes of screen time to run your show. In 2020 on network TV, you get approximately 21 minutes and 30 seconds. You've lost three minutes out of your show. So that's why a lot of network TV so shows... So what's another 30 seconds? Put on a great theme song that everyone knows and remembers and can sing and is catchy. It makes all the difference in the world. The best... It's huge. The, I, Dialogue I, no one will remember. I, I, like a good, I like a good theme song. Uh, don't get me wrong, but you know, after trying to binge watch Game of Thrones, like yeah, I watch it like once or twice, and then it's, yeah, you it's a skip button. It. So that's why, like Netflix, you like Im- Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt has an awesome theme. But even yes, after you watch like three in a row, you're just like skip theme. Let's go right to it. So you, you know how television is supposed to be. be yeah, well, I'm sorry, Tim, that not everyone watches TV like it's 19 fucking 65. But like Breaking Bad didn't. Yeah, but it, I see those. That's what the. But even on AMC, Mad Men did. Mad Men did, yeah, yeah. But again, but that, it wasn't really a. But that's also not really a great. That debuted what seventeen years ago? Mad Men, yeah. Fuck, two thousand three. If that's the is case, that what it is? wow. They actually just got into a thing right now because a lot of yeah, they're old episodes in the race. But yeah, well, I think it's it's. I think they made the right decision. I, I think so too. Like a lot of different shows took off. Like if they had like explicit blackface in their episodes, they took those out of like the streaming services. But the episode in question, Tim, if you remember, is the one where is that where Sterling has his Kentucky Derby show. Yeah, and Don goes to it, and Sterling's doing blackface. I think the whole point of that is that he's an idiot. Is to show how stupid yeah. Sterling yeah. is. Yeah. And that everybody except for Pete and Don think it's funny, but Pete and Don realize that it's terrible. Yeah, I, I I I agree with their decision to keep it in. Like, it was outrageous then. It, the point of it was to be outrageous to show how terrible this was. And that's not the only scene in I, Mad Men where that kind of stuff happens by any means. Uh, but the point of it was to show a how radically different things were in the 1960s and how stupid they were being about these things. And it was there to show that Pete and Don were a bit different than everyone else that they were around at the same time. Correct that they were both men of their times, and that and that Kami, what was his name? Uh, I didn't like him. The guy with the beard. Oh, uh, the guy who Communist. ended up on Briar Patch? Stan? Yeah. Stan the artist? Or are you talking about the guy that ended up in Harry Krishna? Yeah, he was also in the Americans, right? Yes, in Hari Krishna. Yes. Oh, he was the uh, the media guy. No, that was Harry. Yeah. Harry was the media guy. The Brit, no, right? Great. The English guy? No, you're, he's talking, Paul. About, you're talking about Paul. Paul. Them guy going to... Like, they went down... Yeah, exactly. The guy who had the big beard was a communist. Yeah, he ended up... Uh, yeah, he tried to write that uh, Star Trek episode when they finally caught up with him and he was at the Harry Krishna place. Yeah. And he had the little like, pissed himself? No, he like left one, after one the, of the mergers. Three? Season three, yeah. yeah. I, think when St- I think when Sterling Cooper, Draper Price came into existence, he didn't get brought on. That is a show that I'm curious... Yeah, almost like how The Wire became kind of known as the show that you need to watch like well after it was done and even like 10 years after it was done that everyone kind of agrees that that is the show that you need to go watch. Mad Men is going to go into that ether. And people, mm-hmm. people are going to go less with Breaking Bad and more towards Mad Men as time goes along. Maybe, well, because Mad Men is timeless. I agree. That That's exactly why. And to you, the original genesis of this conversation, the theme songs, uh, Tim mentioned The Wire, but no one, I think it's the greatest ever in just how they did it by changing up the genre of music each year. I love. Yeah, but even if, like, I rewatched The Wire very recently. So I watched the theme song once when the new season started. Sure. And then I just, the it, it's three skips on the plus 30 button. Like, you just, just saying, there's no inc- great shows. Yeah, but that's fine. But there's no incentive to do any of this stuff anymore. Like, the best theme song that there is on TV now is Curb, and it lasts four seconds. I don't know if it's the best. It is the most. Uh, when you, so let me ask you this, then. When you hear the HBO, duh, what do you yeah. hear coming out of that in your mind? It's the Curb theme. I, I, I don't know what I think. That's a good question. I'm not sure. What do you think it I'm is? I'm saying I've been watching a lot of old TV. The best shows all have great theme songs. I think there's a value to them. Uh, and I think... If I were running a studio, I would insist on good theme songs. You don't get to the pilot stage without a great theme song with me. 
That's, it sounds like you're running a pretty quality studio over there. That's right? how I feel, and I will not be moved. But the from best it. I modern. I, for, I forgot with Tim that feelings oh. are facts for him. Like truth doesn't matter. His truth is what's important. Like what is the most recent good theme song? Like you mentioned Big Bang Theory, but that show's actually not even that new. It doesn't or, or even has exist a good theme song. anymore. It and it had a like a celebrity band do it as well. It's Bare Naked Ladies. Yes, right? they did. Yeah, yeah, it is Bare Naked Ladies. Yeah. Like we had Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt is the last one that I remember with a really good theme song. And it was based off, and if you didn't know the YouTube video it was parroting, like it would which be. Which people do. Which people do. A lot of people do, but especially like people like our age. Imagine you're 21 right now. You look at it, you're like, what the fuck is this? I mean, I think that Modern Family has a pretty catchy theme oh. song. Like the, the, the music is pretty. I, I like that I show. I don't care. Show. But I, I Modern stand, Family is I'll fine. Stand for that show. Modern Family is like the, the homeless man's arrested development. <laughs> Okay, but like Arrested Development's not on anymore, so it, it actually I'll watch what I can get. But like, didn't no. you? Know, I stopped watching that show when the writers stopped trying. It's probably like three years ago, oh, four years ago. Than that. It's off the air now. It's, it's done. No, I'm yeah, talking it was, about it just wrapped up in Modern May, Family. Yeah. yeah, no, Modern Family's done now. It too. just wrapped up, but I, I like I packed yeah. it up a while ago. I can see these writers were way too rich to give a sh- to to be funny like they used to be. Yeah, the first few se- it's, it's the first the, couple seasons were fantastic. It's, it, it's that's the hard part about these shows that go on for so long is that the deeper you get into it, it's like the Simpsons. Yeah, and you can't really it. blame anyone for taking, taking garbage the bag of money. Yeah, really. here's All twenty right. million dollars. Okay, okay. All I have to do is write them, right? Okay. And that's why when we talk about these, they don't shows, even have to be good. But that's when we talk about these shows that are long lasting. Like realistically, what if Game of Thrones had ended when John died? People would love Game of Thrones. They'd be Very pissed similar. off that you, they never finished yeah. it. But people would be like, oh my God, all these seasons were amazing. amazing. Or just have it when Cersei blew up the place at the end of season six. People like season... Was that five or six, Tim? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Because that episode I'm, that episode is awesome. Yeah, you're right. They, they go. They, but then one. you go, two extra seasons. It's not as good. Now everyone hates yeah. your show. <laughs> they go, But listen, the people behind it, the networks, the ad sales, the people that write it, the people that produced it, it's, it's all just, we're going to keep this train rolling. Very few times do they... Call the number and say we're not gonna do it. No, breaking anymore. Breaking Bad got to do that. Yes, they and th- th- what's working against Breaking Bad, and this is not fair to Breaking Bad, but its spinoff is actually just as good as Breaking Bad. It's a, That's just a fact. It's a good. different kind different, of show. But good. Like it, what, it's different, but it is just as good. It's a different show, but I tell you, and that again, that's nothing against Breaking Bad. It's not its fault. In fact, if anything, it should be a benefit. But it does. A, its spinoff is just as good, and that's very rare that you have that. But it's one of these situations. Like I think Frasier is as good as Cheers. You don't see it very often. See, I, I think that Frasier is better than Cheers, but I am no, I am far more it, fluent with Frasier than Cheers. I haven't gone back again and rewatched Cheers, where I've watched Frasier like four times through, and it's always on too, which helps. Well, well yes, fair enough. But anyway, that my point is that you can count on one hand the amount of shows that do that. Yeah, uh, were you saying Joey wasn't as good as Friends? Because I'd argue they're no, both, but they're like, both equally terrible. I think I the agree. Jeffersons are as good as All in the Family, but Maud isn't. Like, not every show hits that. Mork and Mindy might is not as good as Happy Days. Uh, so, you know, even good shows aren't as good as their progenitors, usually. I'm trying to think of what, like, the most recent spinoffs would be. I'm surprised Modern well, Family doesn't have a spinoff. I guess Young Sheldon. <laughs> yeah, Young Sheldon. Yeah, that's and I guess that's doing well. It's on CBS. Everything on CBS does well. Are you a big fan of Young Sheldon, are you? I haven't watched an episode, Frank. What? The show is like probably about your childhood. But while we're talking about comedy, oh, this show? fellow Dude. this fellow passed while we were we were off. Well, hold on, hold on. What's the new show that you're watching? Well, a is great it Dave? Because you bring that up on every show. No, I finished it like a long-standing <laughs> show that I watched the whole thing. Uh, Bosch is Bosch good? I enjoyed it. If you like those gritty, like detective shows, it has Marlo from The Wire. Yeah, uh, it has the guy from moving. Lost. The guy from the last season of Lost, the bad guy, the smoke monster. Yeah, Titus Culliver, I think his okay, name is. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched like the first two episodes, and 10 it has years uh, the guy, the the detective from like the, geez, what's his name from The Wire, uh, the police chief. Well, I don't know what he was. Uh, oh, Daniels. Yeah. Daniels. Daniels. He he was also in Lost. He was also in Fringe. Too. Yes. Yes. I like Fringe. Yeah. There's a show no one ever talks about anymore. Like the people who wear AirPods. Fringe. Oh, let's talk about this. Do you have AirPods? I don't. I don't. I'm not on them. No, Jeff's a man of the people. 
What is it about AirPods that you don't like? Is that they don't stay in your ears? Is that you lose them? Because I think I would lose them. I just so you run think through. You would lose. Them. Yeah. So Tim is arguing that wired headphones are better than wireless headphones. No, that is wrong. I just lose enough of like the thirteen ninety nine ones just buy that I buy ones. at Best Buy. So I feel like uh, I don't want to make that leap. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to buy a $200 pair because you can just wear the $13 pair that you're going to lose and just go buy other yeah. ones. But he's claiming that wired headphones are great. But you have no idea how many times before like a radio hit, I am untangling like headphones, like producers, like, are you there? Like, it's so annoying because they've just been in my pocket getting tangled. So I went out and for whatever reason, I don't lose a bunch of headphones, but I don't have the air. Like I find that whether it be the Apple wired ones or the AirBuds themselves, like the Apple brand, they don't stay in my ears. I just my ears are too weird to fit it. They just fall out. So I have the Bose, the one with like the like the actual rubber, so it stays in, like the noise canceling ones. I, I would never wear another pair of headphones again. Like when we're editing here, yeah, we have the wired in headphones, so we can hear it directly from the system. But the way that this came up when I was talking to Tim was he claimed that people at the gym don't wear wireless headphones. Almost very few do that I notice. I've, ne uh, I've never, I, I, I don't see people with wired headphones at the gym. Okay. I'm. <laughs> this is an incredibly bougie thing to say. What? Mo most people are using regular headphones that are plugged in. You realize, you know, no, no, Tim, Tim, so stop, Tim, stop. Tim, stop. Blue Tim, stop. Earphones. It is 2020. Regular headphones don't have fucking wires. Yes, they no, do. No, they don't. Just when you, you buy they don't, when you buy an true. iPhone, they come with wireless headphones. No, not yours because you bought the shitty one. iPhone X is a good one. Yeah, I you bought it you three years it. after it came out. It wasn't three years. It's just like, like when you. It's just like when you bought the PS4, oh, yes. knowing that the PS5 was coming out in two months, and then well, we're like, that's blown the away. Fault. The salesman didn't tell me no. that the new one was coming. Not his fault. Not his fault. Not his fault. Because they're trying to unload them, Tim. Not his fault. And I'll tell you why it's not his fault. Because during, like, the COVID quarantine, they were selling a lot of them. They didn't need, like, there was no question and answer period about this. He just assumed you wanted to be a gamer for a couple months. And no bearing know. or even responsibility to tell you a PS5 is coming for holiday 2020. I didn't know. I just said I want the most up-to-date PlayStation because I'm a Sony person. And I believe in brand loyalty. You're loyal a PlayStation. Sony person and you're buying it literally at the end of it. What do you mean you're a Sony person and you're like buying a PlayStation the, 4 summer? You bought a PlayStation 4 summer of 2020 and you're a so and you go in and you say I'm a Sony person. <laughs> Everybody looks at you like you're an insane person. No, no, Which no. Which would be accurate. I who, hold on. Like, who says they're a Sony person? They're looking for a video game. Like... That would imply you've owned this console for like five years already or yours broke down because you played it so much and you're just looking for a new one. I'm a so, Sony no, what, person. What I meant to say by that, if I may, was that every video game console I've ever owned has been a Sony PlayStation. So I have comfort with the way that it works. Uh, what was the last that's what one I meant. that you owned? I'm not on r slash Sony to see the new updates every day. Yeah, I don't think that was uh, exclusive on. to Reddit, Tim. Pe people seem to know that one. For a man of the people, you were really out of the loop. I on had that. no idea, and I just wish the salesman had said, "Hey, by the way, you know they're coming up with a new one of these in a few months." He's supposed to be my friend. He's supposed to help me. But you just walk into places. I really, I mean, Tim bought a car, but he bought it off like a dead person from like what, what years your car like two thousand two. Yes. Yeah, and he bought it after some like old guy died. Uh, like last year. Yeah, whatever. Uh, great savings. But like if I was a car, like worked at a car dealership and Tim came walking onto my lot, I'd be like, let me tell you about the Supreme package. <laughs> like, I know. It, it's what you need. You are, Tim, the console has existed for seven years. <laughs> for seven years. And you told him you're a Sony guy. <laughs> that might imply, you know that, the, the, the release of five hasn't been a secret, even though it became official like weeks ago. It's been well known that a 2020 console war release between Microsoft and, and Sony was going to be the next gen console war. Like that was no secret anywhere. Well, it was a secret to me because I didn't know. Maybe you should become Honestly, a more, you should really become a more informed consumer. The thing is, I still would have bought it. 
because I needed it. Yeah, exactly. But, That's what because of the. the but I, it would have been nice if someone had said, "Hey, by the way, a new one is coming in a few months," just so that you know. Hey, Tim, you should have went on like Kijiji or something for these things. You would have got no, it. No, for- this was an imp- it was it was completely an impulse. An impulse. Yeah, you should, yeah. Which you- is sometimes how the which is how I do a lot of my shopping. Because like people are unloading those for like two hundred bucks and lower. Like you would have. I don't want to know that. Uh, yeah. Please. They I mean, were, they look were for those types I of things when like you're looking for seven year old uh, devices. Yeah. yeah, but were they pre owned? Because I don't like owning pre owned stuff. Oh. oh, I'm too oh good. Uh, I, <laughs> you guys are all fancy and elitist. I refuse to. No, just I like I like that you won't own. I I like that you won't buy a pre-owned playstation but you will buy a pre-owned car something that you actually have to go cleaned. into i had it cleaned you, you don't think you can take a lysol wipe well, well hold on what are you doing are you sitting inside the playstation well no but you touch the playstation with your hand don't you can lysol <laughs> what do you mean you your car well just the car was cleaned when I purchase it, like, so, had, like, like the, what way? Well, you can't lysol wipe wet. the controller and like the dust saying, off the just, console. I, when I don't have to purchase something else that someone else has handled, I'd prefer not to. That's why I don't like to order groceries online because I don't like other people handling my food any more than they have to. Yeah, but you, do, just, yeah, but you don't go to the self checkout, so someone's always handling your food when you go to the grocery store. I have been going to the self checkout pretty regularly during COVID oh, because I just have you. Prefer. I thought I thought you wanted to go to the counter to make sure that those people kept their jobs, Tim. If the line is shorter there, I would go to them. Yes, but as a rule, the line has been much shorter at the self checkout. Oh, it's but. funny how his values change when it's convenient for him. Uh, no, I, I think I still hold the same position that of all things we're eating equal, I'd go to the cashier. I've, but if they're not, well, then. But that was never the case. The The self-checkout almost always, especially before nah. all this happened, has a way shorter line. Always shorter. Depends on it's the time of day, shorter. my friend. No, it doesn't. It's always shorter. Yeah, it always does. shorter. And it moves much faster. And I'll say this about COVID right now. Getting in the stores is easy. Getting out's the problem. It seems like the line's even for, for everywhere. But self-checkout, still faster. And there's something up with this. Sorry, I don't want to assume something's up in the town that you are from in which Tim resides because I just assume it's Tim being insane. But he makes ridiculous observations. The headphones is one thing, like at the gym. It, which has been confirmed by our friend who actually, like, Tim doesn't even go to the gym. So how yes, does he I do. No, but our friend who actually goes to the gym has confirmed like 95% yeah. of the people have wireless headphones. My point being is because it's something I'm enjoying right now but meaning to bring up to Tim all day. I'm enjoying like an amazing swamp slushy. I went to a 7-Eleven. They oh, had like God. 15 l- options and I I went nuts with about four of them. You claiming, much like people in your hometown don't use wireless headphones at the gym, you claim people don't mix slushies. But I, I've never seen it done. Never. That's I, I have. done before. And I don't year. I don't I don't drink or eat you slushies. You are full of people shit. I know. Eat them. No, way. I'm not. I've never seen that. Never it's seen, never even occurred to me. You've never seen that. It never would have occurred to me to make swamp water out of my out of my slushies. You want a blue slushy today or a red one or a Coke one or whatever? Oh, the blue, like, the red, the mix. It's all in here, bud. So maybe to go back to the beginning, maybe Tim wouldn't be so bad on alone since he seems to have no touch with regular society as it is. So just being out in the wilderness for a hundred days may not affect him. I think you make things up, but like you're, not you're actually calling him a liar. No, like he sees what. Wa- it's like the tr- living the truth, but in more ways than just the internet. Like two, like he sees see two people wearing assume. wireless headphones. He assumes the gym is packed with people wearing, I mean, headphones with wires. That's, I mean, the only explanation. I, I, because I, I used to work out with wired headphones. And then so much better. It, it's I don't understand how you could say it so much. <laughs> so better. much better. Tim clearly doesn't work out very hard. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. Again, there you go. Uh, obnoxious uh, how is that obnoxious look at you look at me who do you think works out harder please that has absolutely give me a fucking nothing. break here um it has so nothing to we, do i am not finished my sentence oh i, I you know what i personally do. don't care i'll just take you out of my ear uh, it has um, nothing to do so with the wires when you're at, like wired. if you're doing sprinting or you're doing running or anything like that asinine. and you have like the wired and it's in your pocket like that becomes somewhat difficult it can fly out uh, if you just have it wireless, you can just stick that wherever and keep on going. You can put it on top if you're running on a treadmill. You can put it up there. But if you're actually, like, lifting on a bench, if you don't run the wire all the way down through, like, your shirt and then, like, tuck it in, the wire gets, like, a bit flimsy on the outside. So, like, when you're going down and you press up, you, like, pop it out of one side of the ear. Like, it's just, it can, creates a gigantic castle. So that would be the issue that I have with it where wireless, none of this happens. Makes total Maybe sense. for you. Maybe for you, but these are not problems that I've encountered. I'm like not fine. working out. 
So it's just been a th- other than having to untangle the wires, it's the I have practic- a gym time booked for tomorrow. What are you gonna do? Give me your uh, set list for. Well, you only have an hour. Okay. So, so tell me what you're getting in. You should probably be doing some super. I have a plan. It's got to be. It'll have to be mostly cardio, and then why a would you bit spend your time? Yeah. Why would you book an appointment at the gym to do cardio when you can go fucking run outside? Because I don't particularly like to run outside. He's awesome. I like to use the machines that I'm paying for, That's, and then I'll do some weights at the end. That's just like what goes, I like to do. So you're going to go on a treadmill at your one hour at the gym. Just go booked. swimming for cardio. Yeah, you live on a lake. Yeah, but lake swimming is not as easy as you'd think because there are currents. Even and, more you know, you, difficult. Yeah, better workout. This is what I'm talking about. You don't work out very hard. You're going there to uh, walk okay. on a treadmill. <laughs> I'm not going to walk on the treadmill, although walking on a steep incline is actually a pretty good workout. But, but, uh, but you're going to go walking, just not on an incline. So you must no, miss the air-conditioned use... malls. I miss – well, the malls are back open, and I've been a couple of times. But, no, I'm going to use the elliptical because that's really good for my joints, and I'm going to use the spin bike, and I'm then I'm going to use some weights or the circuit, and then that's what I'm going to do. See, this seems like a complete waste of time. If you're going to go – like, you could have bought yourself all, all calories burned or equal. You, it you, does not matter. Yeah, well, I mean, put it this way. You could have just, you, instead of spending your money on an outdated PS4, you could have just went and bought an elliptical. No, I need to, I, I like to work out out of the house. I don't want to bring my workout home with me <laughs> and live at my gym. I want to go to the gym. I would think, and maybe this is just a pers- personal to me. Maybe to... I have this wrong. But if I was going to go book an hour at the gym, I would want to go do the things at the gym that I don't have access to yeah. at every other time. That's Car- just common sense. Cardio is cardio. You figure out your cardio one way or another. Like if I'm going there, like I don't have a bench at home. I'm going to bench. I don't have access to super heavy weights at home. I'm going to lift super heavy weights when I go to the gym. I have barbells at home up to a certain point. I can do all those exercises. I can go for the run. I have a track next to my head if, if I want to go run sprints. But if I'm going to go and put my... I can't imagine gyms are super safe at the moment. No. A bunch seem of like... people sweating. And I understand you. Tim's point. Like, I mean, I'm not a worker out person, but uh, <laughs> I understand Tim's point. He doesn't want to like turn his house into the gym. But I was like in these times, in a situation where you have to book an appointment to use the gym, that's when you just turn your house into a bit of a gym with what you have. Yeah, especially if it's, it's something like like an elliptical versus like Tim, you can't get a bike. Like you live on the perfect biking road. That I de- I despise outdoor biking. He's gonna Indoor survive. He's fun. gonna survive in the Arctic. Yeah, he's gonna be fine. He doesn't want to run outside. He doesn't want to bike outside. We'll put him in the Arctic. He's fine. <laughs> he with needs, no food. He needs fire. to do his cardio indoors. He cannot swim. <laughs> like this cardio snob cannot survive in the Arctic. I could. It would be difficult, but I could do it. Again, snob is just a preference thing. I prefer to do things indoors. I don't have to. I could run outside. I just don't like doing it. Uh, it it's, but you'd I, rather I book a prefer- one-hour appointment in, like, where your risk is elevated. It's to, not even to that. Do cardio. Here's the here's the big key to all of it. When you get to the gym, I don't know what gym you're going to. I assume it's the same one that I go to. The same chain. Uh, yes. All right. So you're going to get there, and I assume capacity is limited uh, for these hours. You're going to get there, and you're going to see people who are, like, really giving it, and you're, like, walking on the treadmill or going on the elliptical, and that's what you're using. You're going to get so many death glares from the people who well, really want to get in there to actually work out when you could be doing that at home. Well, I don't Whatever. care. My money's as green as anybody else's. Like, if they think that's going to shame me, I will not be shamed. We know you have no shame. Just I listen guess to what you've said for the past to your To Pat's point, the, like, elliptical machine is probably the, the safest machine in there. And the treadmills. Yeah, it's away I, from everybody else. I think, I think that they have dividers up at a lot of places. And they, I'm just saying because second, people aren't going second. into the gym to, do use, to yeah. use the cardio yeah, machines. Yeah, because why would you? You run outside. So then, just point is, then that's the safest spot to be. Yeah, you're still yeah, in there. But, You'd be much safer at home where other people are going rel- in and out. I was saying relatively speaking, but sure. You got anything else? What did I have else? I mean, those were the main things that I had down on the card, actually. You got nothing else? Nothing else bothering you? Oh, uh, well, I mean, yes. But I guess it just proves, again, how right I am about things. Okay. <laughs> like, I put this out on Twitter last week when I saw it. Millennials are now using avocado shells to drink lattes out of. Uh, no, they, act, they they actually aren't. This I knew that this millennial fad was going to hit its zenith 
that this fringe culture was going to hit its high point, and we have it now. You know, these are the people, right, that when TIFF existed, they probably would have went to TIFF or the CNE to eat their fancy foods. Well, they can't do that anymore. So now they have to get their avocado shells and put a, like, it doesn't even make sense as a receptacle for a latte. Uh, like, you should be using a cup or a mug, or I think some of them coming like glass cups uh, in some some bars or whatever, or, bistro, or uh, like coffee bars, whatever they're called. So we figured this out now. So Tim sees one thing and assume everyone does it. This is... This is what they're all doing. Obviously. Who's on? Have you ever ha, have you ever met a person who's done this? I have not met somebody, but oh, so but, but you know that you know that they exist everywhere, though, don't you? Not everywhere, but they clearly exist, and I knew it was, I knew it was going to happen. It just it was an it was an inevitability as far as the mm -hmm. night. It, it, you knew it was going to happen. Jeff, have you ever seen anyone do this? I've never. Paul? I didn't even know it existed. Paul? I didn't even see the tweet. Only the video that Tim sent me. Also. Hilarious saying that the CNE is bougie. That's something that local people understand. You mean, you mean it's like currently, completely false. It, the equivalency of the, of the CNE to something in America would be the state fair. Yeah. A hundred percent. There's nothing bougie <laughs> it, it's, about it's it. It's like hot dogs covered in chocolate deep fried. Here you go. And you that see, I listen, of course you do. I live in this of course city. You think that. I've lived in Toronto, born and raised my whole life. I, are you, I wonder what holes some of these those people crawl out of to go to that thing. Not the highest class of. No, I'm not even saying like anywhere, working down like you see everything, and then there's like a group I don't know where they're from. So it's the the farthest thing from, but Tim just thinks because it happens in Toronto that it's like yes. high class. Well, it, well, I mean, yeah, well, he also said that millennials go to TIFF, which they don't. It's just like super rich people who go to TIFF. It's for the movie industry. Yeah, how do you I, go to international a wide range? Yeah, well, I mean, what you industry. think, as we found out, means nothing because it's not based in fact. It's just what you personally feel. Oh, I'm sure some kid who works for Rolling Stone is going to cover. Is the Rolling Stone country. like still a thing? Oh yeah, it's still. I, a thing. Is it? I'm sure they. Uh, yes. It do, is. do you go? Do, do you see the magazine at the store? I don't look, but I think they have it at the chapter, so I, I'm sure that it's still there. I don't know about that. I don't know if they still print Rolling Stone magazine. I think they do. I could be wrong. I I'm, think, I'm, I don't know if it just went online, but I think they do. Imagine, My point is, you've got young people who are definitely covering, who definitely cover TIFF, who are movie critics or uh, film critics or whomever. So you say that who people who upon. work in an industry covering the thing are bougie because they're there? You don't think TIFF is bougie? Okay. No, TIFF it's, is bougie. It's, I, but it's not for millennials. But it's for bougie people. Yeah, for like bougie 50 year olds. No, I think CNE is more of that than you want to give it credit for. But anyway, Tim, we went to a casino at CNE, which was unlicensed, <laughs> and they hired a bunch of dealers who didn't know the rules of blackjack. Tim, they sold so cotton a... candy and like yeah. Subway and like I, candy I, I, apples. The Subway. So. Tim, it's 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 it has its charms, but it's freaking revolting. <laughs> it's a revolting place. My I wife it loves like it. I just urge her that we go in the first few days. Where it's just like, I don't know. You hope the the the, the grease is fresh. Have you? I understand CNE to be like Toronto's biggest festival that people like embrace it and cherish it, and it's like a part of what it, the city it, is. It's like is Parkdale, which is ways. the West End, and super greasy. Like it's not. Where the it, Blue Jays used to It's play. a state fair. It's a state fair. There's just no other way to explain it. There's no one that's ever gone to their state fair and said, "I go to a classy a affair. event." Yeah, it's where the Blue Jays used to play 32 years ago. Fair enough. I just, I, in my mind, ma imagine it as like the marquee event of like the Toronto social calendar. No, what are you talking because, about? It's for all the lows. He like <laughs> just sees like the gates that has like the Queen Elizabeth yes, the, and, like, very nice and thinks that it's like fancy. But that's just the gates to this complex. Yeah, it's just a bunch of fucking Ferris wheels. It's like when the Bell and Fair games. comes yeah. through town and they have it at like the local mall parking locket lock of your hometown. <laughs> it's just a bigger version of like, that. Like it's not even you, you go play the stupid game where you throw the rings onto the thing and win prizes that do not adjust. I was never good at that. Hold on, though. You're not good at anything. We just talked through this. I wouldn't even call like the amuse the local amusement park bougie. Like Wonderland, I wouldn't say is a bougie place. No, it's a it's an it's like a it's an amusement park, and this is like the lower exponentially of that. grosser than that. But again, it has its charms. You, it's fun to yeah, go to for yeah, three hours. The crazy foods, you eat your face off, and I don't know. You might go a on a ride today, if you want to like fall off. 
Yeah, you don't want to fall off. Yes, they have a pizza pizza and a subway. Oh, well, that's what I triggers me. That's what that, that's why he keeps making these jokes, because every year I go, I make fun of the people that go. That and stand in a line at the subway? Like pizza pizza or subway or Tim Hortons. Like, who the F lines up for that? Losers, like Tim. People who are so afraid to do any... It's the same type of people who refuse to leave their house because they're too scared, yet think that they can survive in the Arctic for 100 days without food. I leave my house all the time. What are you talking about? Do we have to do what exactly? To go for walks? But why would you stay home to eat and not get food and eat two sleeves of Oreos? Wasn't your excuse like, I don't want to go outside? Those days it was so cold that I just couldn't be bothered. But what about the Arctic? That's not cold? That's my point. Okay. I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to poke holes. I but mean, it's a different atmosphere when you're out on TV. <laughs> and plus, the thing is, I'd be on TV. I wouldn't want to make a fool of myself on TV. We had this show used to be on TV. You would come on this show. More people might watch this than something that runs on the History Channel, depending on the time of day it runs. That, that is true. Actually. I'm not even trying to put air in your tires. I just have seen back channel numbers on cable in my life. And it's, it's embarrassing how some of these channels exist. Okay. Public funding. I concede. Yeah, and they get the one or two channels that are popular that yeah. the parent company owns to advertise on the those. You also have to buy a package on the channels nobody watches to keep them alive. Yeah, alone actually does decent ratings. Okay, yeah, but, I'm oh, not. But, no, but Oak Island does like legitimate ratings. Okay, like, that fine. is a very watcher. But yeah, basically, every... I, I don't understand it either. I've been to Oak Island. Like it's not that remarkable. You haven't been to Oak Island. We saw Oak Island at a wedding we were at. You've never been. The on resort Oak is called the Oak Island Inn. <laughs> It's not on Oak Oak Island. Island. I'm there. You can see it across the little bay. You're there. It counts. I count it. It's like if you uh, connect through an airport somewhere, you were in that. No, that is. You connected through that because you were there. If you had committed a crime in that airport, you would have been arrested and charged in whatever state or province you were in. If you count claim that you've been somewhere and all you've ever been is the airport to that place that is just living proof you don't fucking go anywhere i've been to dulles fort worth yeah I, i've been to ottawa 27 times in the airport it counts it doesn't I'm count sorry it just simply counts it doesn't count the flight that you so, were I, so on what you're saying you went to this city so what you're saying is i've been to paris because i was in de gaulle if you stopped at charles de gaulle i did yes you did for four hours you were before in, i went to morocco and tim you, were you seem like the type of guy that's like, it wouldn't count that you went to a city unless you came home with a Hard Rock t-shirt from there. <laughs> no, although I would want a Hard Rock t-shirt <laughs> from, from Paris. Uh, no, like it seems to me, once you're there, on the ground, you're in there, you're there. You know, I had to travel once to connect through Tokyo. I've been to Japan. Oh, my <laughs> God. Travel through Hong Kong. Oh, my God. Get I'm out of here. Kong. Damn. 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 <laughs> It That's counts. ridiculous. <laughs> it's a hard and fast. You don't have to. There's no fudging your gray area of well, it counts sometimes and not others. I take a hard and fast stance. If you land, if you were physically in the in the in the in the, in the province or country or territory, you were there. No, I want to. I, I, I want to hear from the people on this one. Please tweet at us or leave it in the comment section. When you tell people you've been to places, airports are no man's You bring land. up airports. That's what. I, no, that's why I want only out. if you're talking about airports you've been to yeah so like tim is like tim where are some places you've been oh well i've been to the united states and japan <laughs> i mean you're oh, what'd you do in japan oh, i was in the airport <laughs> yeah you're allowed to say like yeah i've been there before but only in the airport so not really like the, you can't you can't like pass it off if, as, you if i were asked you'd, you'd have to add on the extra little bit again of this is you so just trying to know that you live haven't your actually truth been there with this. it's not you, my you truth. want to you want Japan. to pass off the experience of having been there and claiming you've been there when you really haven't been there airports I are like international like in, waters I, I so it agree. doesn't count They're it doesn't count in that, i was in narita airport i bought food at mcdonald's with yen of course you I did ate it there of course you of course you got mcdonald's one meal in japan and it was mcdonald's it was unbelievable how the quarter pounder tasted exact. Anyway, whatever. My point being, I was there. I was in Japan. It counts. It can't be taken away from me because I choose not to like make up uh, uh, out of thin air what constitutes being somewhere and not being there. I have a hard and fast line. If you were physically there, then you were there. If Jeff, I guess it's hard someone, to argue against if that. Someone point. told you that. Well, let's just pick a different place that's not Japan. Let's say. Uh, India. You were going to, I don't know, 
the Middle East or something, the Maldives Islands, and you had to stop in Bombay at the airport. At the airport, you were just going through. That's where your connection was. That's where they had to refuel. You stopped there for an hour. You went on your way, and someone asked you, like, "How was India?" Like, would you tell them, like, "Oh, you know, I've been to India. Let me tell you about oh, India." Oh, Tim would hard sell. I know Tim would hard sell. This is what we're trying to get at. Tim would embellish yeah. the fact yeah. that he has been to Japan no, no. when, in fact, he I was. I would say only been the there for a couple. I'd say I was only there for a few hours. And then, and then the peop- the person would say, oh, so you've never really been there. And I would say, well, what does that mean? No, and then people would laugh at you like they do. Literally. No, Tim, this, right. is, this is Stop. why people laugh at you. Tim, I'm right. You could fly over a country, and by your rule, you were there. No, no, you've got to be physically on the ground, right? You've got why, to, like, why, 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 is there, why are there new why? distinctions? Why? What's the There's, difference? When you're in the air, you're not actually really in a space. Plus, provincial boundaries don't go up to infinity either. Or state boundaries don't go up to infinity. Uh, the per- if boots are on the ground, you're there. Yeah, but you're in. Uh, what if you never get off the plane? It has to make an emergency landing. That happened to me in Omaha, so Nebraska. People have asked me if I've ever been to Saskatchewan. I say yes because I had to make an emergency landing but, in Saskatchewan. But we didn't get off the plane. They just got got the a medical plane, situation was... off the plane. And, and Tim is the type of person to tell you that he was there. This is the exact situation I had in Saskatoon. I consider myself having been to Saskatchewan <laughs> because of it. 100% it counts. 100% it counts. Why wouldn't it count? It doesn't count. Because some people count. say, oh, well, you know, you haven't. It doesn't count. You know, if, oh, well, if you haven't been to, to, to Taylor Field, you haven't been to, to, to Saskatoon. No, I, or that's Regina, I guess. Well, then, no. So, sorry. No, I don't, I don't feel that it, way. It's like if you, if you get fewer than three pumps in on sex, it's not really sex. <laughs> Hate to tell you, I'm not willing to make these distinctions that you are. I think that no, I, we, I live in reality hard. with people who go places, and they're like, "Yeah, I went somewhere and I did this. I've been to this place." Not well, I, I was in the airport once. I, I you, you did just bring it up to us. I would I almost give you. You would maybe get like a little bit of credit if let's just say there was like a very famous. Japanese based restaurant that had one no. in the airport. No. no, I'm just saying no. for a conversation no. in the airport, like this world. Famous, and that's the restaurant you ate at. Uh, I still wouldn't say you've been there, but you can't even bring that to the table. You just had McDonald's. Well, this is the argument I get in with our friends about Chicago style pizza. So I've only ever been to the airport, but they have a Chicago style pizza Great place airport. in the airport. Who knows? And right. I, whatever, I don't know. I cannot. It, it's actually right next to the McDonald's. It's probably and, and Uno because it's like a fast food pizza. Probably. Yeah, that's, that's Tim's jam, fast food pizza. But it's not like yeah, the real I, deep dish no, that not. people are like waiting it's the, it's 40, That's like, that's like if Chicago you get a Philly cheesesteak at Subway. <laughs> Which I have and think is great. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Say, but my point like, was, all, you, all you have to say is, hi, I'm Tim. I have bad taste. If no, you just I say that, many, a lot of this makes more sense. You're, you just have different taste. My point no, you have bad taste. You have objectively bad taste. That's I why people tell you you have bad taste. Some people do. Some people agree. most people do. The my, vast my point majority is, of people tell you you have bad taste. You're making up rules as you go, and it's all contingent on on factors. I'm being very hard and fast and empirical. You're you're somewhere if you've actually physically been there. I don't know. I think you have all your work cut out for you. I I guess I well, I want to hear from the people. So when Tim comes up and tells you all about Japan. Because he's been in no, the airport once. That, that hey, would be a lot. Yeah, you've done that before. That's the thing. I, I've been just, around this. If somebody said to me, you brought it up the other day that you were in Hong Kong to our friend who lives across from Hong Kong. You're like, well, I've been to Hong Kong. You're in the <laughs> fucking airport. <laughs> but I was there and for quite a while and I fell asleep. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should run a poll. Like, no, just if people have listened this far, just tell us what you think on it. Yeah, maybe we're all wrong and Tim is right. Maybe that is the realm we're living. It's 2020, so, Jeff. Anything can hold happen. Hold on, though. Are you saying there's two different distinctions? You're allowed to say. You're allowed to say you've like technically been there, but you haven't visited. Like your passport was stamped in Paris when you arrived. No. Yes, it no. had to. I don't think no, you it, were no, going it, to no, customs. No, it doesn't. I didn't have to clear customs. I was in the international terminal. I well, changed when flight I went through to Hong Kong, and when I went through Japan, I had to clear customs, and I was just connecting through those two airports. Yeah, well, I had to clear customs. That sucks for you then. I didn't have to so, clear anything. I walked through. I went to my other gate, and we went on to Morocco. I believe okay, that's well, a European, that been, but I believe that is a European yeah, Union thing. 
Because once, maybe, you, once maybe, you clear it going so. in and you don't leave the European Union. Fair enough. If you were flying home. from Toronto to Paris to Marrakesh, then you probably would have had to clear French. Sure. Country. I flew from Berlin to Paris, to uh, Casablanca, actually. Berlin, the most overrated city in Europe. Have you been there? No, I haven't, but it has no character. I know it has no character. It's not Munich. Uh, Munich was actually kind of terrible. Munich, well, Munich has great character. Mu- that, Mu- that's Munich has abs- Mu- Munich actually has no character. You know why? Because it got blown the fuck up. It's all like new. Yes, because Berlin was really well maintained during the war. Oh my god, you can see a clear line of demarcation in the city right at the east-west, where there's just completely different types of architecture all the way through. As someone who's been there, and I can actually talk to this, Jeff, not someone who once Google mapped it. Yeah. Listen, Munich's a part of Bavaria. Bavaria has a rich history. It just, I don't know, Tim just, read it in a book. It has to be true. He doesn't need to go there and experience it for himself. If I wanted to go to Berlin, I could just go to Toronto or I, London. I, I, like, would, I, would say that, what? I would say that Berlin was like a really nice version of New York and Toronto. Like the, there you go. The then I'll just go to New York version. or Toronto. Like, but you don't need to. This, is, this was beyond. Hmm. Yeah, it's so clean. Munich. It is. But you've never been to either. So shut the fuck up. Um, it, opinions. About what? Things you don't know anything about. You know, I don't have to be there to have experience what? of it. But you're going to compare one city to another and what it's like to go to them. Yet you've yeah, never if been, I had to choose but, where but I you've travel, never, I would... Sure, you can choose to travel to one of them. And if you never go to the other one, how are you going to know the difference? I just, I, there's more historical stuff I want to see and experience. and I don't know. So you can just say, I'm Tim. I don't have a fucking clue. I have a clue. You don't, I know you, what's you don't have a clue, it seems. My point is, I just think Berlin's a very overrated city. But you've never been there. my life. I don't need to be. You just you just confirmed what I thought. What? That it's like Toronto or London yeah, or New it's, York. It's a it's world just, class. Eh. It's a world class city. Uh, Munich was nice. It looks like old Toronto. Is basically what it is. It's all buildings from like the 1950s, 1960s. It's fun. It has a cool vibe to it. Like it has a. I mean, Tim, if you want to go like hipster, Munich's your city. It's like the millennial hipster place of Germany. I like old Toronto, so I probably would like that. I know when I talk about like old Toronto, I'm talking about like where Paul lives. Oh, you don't mean like the actual old Toronto? No, like the part where like the, the stuff the is district. still fucking old, not no. the part where everything is old new, where it's brand new. Like York, like where yeah, he's talking about like York, like the English. Yeah, he's talking about like Yorkdale or Yorkville, I mean, wherever the one by me is. Yeah, but like Munich, Yorkville, Yorkville. The, uh, uh, Munich, a lot of like yeah, the downtown really resembled like what I assume Toronto looked like thirty years ago. Like the buildings are not not like there is up to date stuff, but like. It was a lot of like older stuff. It had like a real feel to it, uh, where Berlin was just like absolutely brand new. But listen, if the Berlin travel uh, group wants to send us all to Berlin to check it out, prove you don't wrong, get to come. You know what? If they oh, oh. offer that, you can't come. I have to come. You, you, I'd you, be you, the, you're the not, not allowed in Germany. Sorry, you're out. We've got some. Whatever. Yeah. So what? So someone's supposed to send us on like a camping trip to be filmed and to Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> I want to film that. I want to. I want to film the archer, Us him camps. picking off the moose from twenty yards away. There's a better chance he pierces. Twenty himself. yards is not that far, dude. It, it, well, how far did you say you could throw a javelin before? Hun- like hundred yards. Do you have no, you ever? No, no, that's a football field. I can. What do they call art? Like to be an archer? Yeah, you have like a have you, archery. Have you ever done it? Once that you will not do it, <laughs> the thing will come out limp. No, he, like t- it will. I, I forget if it was javelin or shot put, but when he told us how far he could throw one of them, it was like an outrageous number. And then we looked it up, and it was longer than the world record. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I and don't he said it was going to be happened. easy. <laughs> I don't remember that, but if you say it happened, it happened. I will. Uh, I will confirm that with our friend Tim Butts. I, I don't. I'm not disputing. It, I just don't remember it. Ma, I've lost my train. But my point is, if you're out in the wild, like all you have to do is time. So I'd be practicing my bow shots over and over and over. Again. Where do you think you're getting? A, you're not fucking Legend of Zelda. You don't have you know, unlimited arrows. Well, you just go grab the arrow off the, so, the target that you make every time. Do they give? Do they give you a bow and arrow? You wouldn't even be able to pierce the sucker. That would be the oh, big part like because you would like maybe if you got it there, like okay, would we'll, like hit him and like what just hit me? Like a branch fell on me. You wouldn't be able to get it out unless you had one of these like really high end uh, bows that you probably just don't even need to like flick back. You just like hit a button, like a crossbow. Yeah, no, I, you, they don't have one of those. It's one of those old homemade dealy looking ones. You're done. I think I could figure it out. You, you really seem to think a lot of things. <laughs> not well thought, like not through, but you think a lot. He's of like things. the world's 
He's the biggest armchair quarterback of like life that I know. The only like when I think like when I see something Tim could be good at on TV, although he probably wouldn't be good at it. Remember that South Park episode where they were playing the guy in uh, World of Warcraft and he was really good? That could be Tim, I think. I think Tim could really excel at World of Warcraft. <laughs> If you put I'm his mind not, to I mean, it. I assume he's bad at it, but if you really put his time into it, no, that seems right up your sports, alley. I only play sports video games. I, I don't go in for these other ones. Yeah, I know. Like, I guess the only non-sports one I ever played that was ever really good at was GoldenEye. That was it. I have s- such... But you've never owned a 64. How are you good at GoldenEye? No, I, I didn't, but I used to go over to a friend's house. Right, I'm, I'm sure you're fucking great at GoldenEye, man. I'm sure. I was really good. C- comparing to how good you are at other video games, I have my doubts you were any good at GoldenEye, considering you didn't own an N64. No, I didn't. I went over to a friend's place who did own one. Yeah, so you played it for what, like uh, 20 minutes a week? You're good, though? Oh, I played it more than that. Anyway, I, I was pretty. I thought I was pretty good at it. You, you say, again, you think a lot of things, just not through. Well, what I think is all I have to contribute. So what you're saying is that you live your truth and not the factual truth. I didn't say that. That is what you're saying. You're at least implying that. <laughs> No, I'm not. Thank you. We got off the rails here about these millennial latte cup avocado. Yeah, because like one like, person had it and took a picture no, of it. it just shows and and, and all you've said is that everyone does it. Never you've never met no, any not person everyone. who does it. Even not in this everyone, bougie city of Toronto, I haven't seen it like advertised as a thing. Yeah, I bet if you look close enough, you'd find it. Bet you I would. Anyway, that will do it. On Cuss Corner, I want to thank Tim. I want to thank Jeff. Thank Paul. Behind the camera, hit the description of this episode, and you will find all of the Cuss Corner links from over the past four years. Remember to like the episode and tell us whatever it was that I asked about, about going to a place. Tim's going to tell you all about Hong Kong. He was in the airport once. Uh, and leave a five-star rating for the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Pat Mayo Experience! Experience!